when you talk about home theater in general it means recreating the theater like experience at home and apart from the screen sound also plays a big role which most people tend to ignore nowadays you can watch netflix prime video 4k blu rays and also play games on a home theater which is a really wonderful experience if the setup is done right now if you are looking for the best 5.1 speaker under 20k for pc gaming then there aren't any option than to buy the logitech z906 because of the support for analog pcm audio the successor to the legendary logitech Tech Z5500, the Z906 comes with a reduced 8 inch subwoofer. Now, Logitech has created the Z5500 speakers mostly for PC users in mind, but these are proven to be excellent for movies. So, even many budget home theater enthusiasts choose this for their setup. Okay, so I'm not going to waste time reading the specification. You can pause the video and read it here. Like I said in my other reviews, reading the specification and showing a sound demo isn't called a review. I think review should be about facts and opinions. The speaker has a THX certification, which means it can produce reference quality audio. So designing such a system takes a lot of R&D. Unlike most Indian speaker manufacturer, except maybe Sonodyne. The speaker comes with a console, kind of feels like an AV receiver. It feels plasticky and has real low weight to it. The input LED displays input like optical, analog. Also, you can switch it easily via the small remote. Here, you can also force stereo audio to play as a 2.1 or a 4.1. The console also has a LED notification for all five speakers. It's helpful for adjusting volume levels for individual speakers, but you can only adjust the volume levels for center, subwoofer, and combined surround sound. And there aren't any option to adjust the front speaker volume. The decode LED will light up as soon as it detects any recognizable audio signal like Dolby Digital or DTS. Now good thing is that it comes with two optical inputs. Here one of which is plugged in directly to my TV and I got the Amazon Fire Stick 4K with it. I can watch Netflix Prime Video in Dolby Digital 5.1. And the other one comes from my PC where I can play Blu-ray rips. Now since this speaker doesn't have HDMI ARC or HDMI eARC. So it doesn't support any latest lossless audio codecs such as Dolby Digital Plus or Dolby True HD Atmos. So if you force fit any one of those then it will play in matrix mode or Dolby Digital Pro Logic which I call it a fake surround sound. That time the decode LED won't light up. In summary whenever you fit any recognizable audio format this decode LED will light up and it goes same for the console games as well because they both support Dolby Digital and DTS. But not PC games though. Cause all the PC games only support PCM type audio which is an open source type audio codec and it also produces lossless audio via analog or even HDMI. But for optical lossless PCM only supports up to 2 channel and lossy 6 channels. So for PC gaming you have to use analog cables to get true surround sound. All the game developers and movie publishers pay licensing fees to Dolby and DTS to use their codecs. But PCM is completely open source just like HDR10. One thing I also like to note here is that DTS HD Master Audio and DTS X are both multi-channel lossless codecs. But if you fit any one of them, then it can surprisingly down convert to a DTS 5.1 surround sound. And mind you, this isn't a fake surround sound. It will simulate those missing sound and height channel to your back surround with a different pitch. This is very important because many of the movies comes with a DTS X track. Like for example, all the Harry Potter 4K Blu-rays. Now before I get to the sound quality, I also wanted to clarify a few things. Like I said, I am using this speaker with my TV and PC. TV's built in Netflix app has an audio delay, so it's pretty much unusable there. By the way, I have done a review of this TV. The TV had a multiple firmware update and now you have also got Prime Video. And for some reason it only supports stereo via optical. So because of all this, I bought an Amazon Fire Stick 4K and by which everything is just perfect. I am able to get both Netflix and Prime Video on 4K HDR with 5.1 support via optical. Now for PC, I use this analog for gaming. But for movies, especially Blu-ray, I use this K-Lite codec with Madvier plugin. And I just change the audio track manually to get Dolby DTS decode. Cause most of the 4K Blu-ray comes with multiple tracks like Dolby True HD Atmos, Dolby Digital 5.1 etc. You can change this track manually. I also use Plex but I will make a separate video on it. All the audio and video recordings were done with my phone and YouTube only supports stereo audio. So you do have to rely on my opinion. I have previously owned the Logitech Z5500 and I have also heard some of the best home theater speakers such as my favorite 
folk audio signature series T50 as well as Pioneer Andrew Jones and Elac debut CDs which is what I'm planning to put in my home theater room in future preferably a 7.1.4 channel setup all right so i am testing this in my dedicated soundproof room custom fitted with acoustic panels to control the reverb but i also did test this speaker in a normal living room and i can confirm that this speaker sound far better in my home theater room now unfortunately i don't have the equipment to measure the exact frequency response so you have to trust my opinion here in a good setup, if you watch a movie with your eyes closed, you should be able to pinpoint in which direction the sound is coming from. This is called a sound stage. A good sound stage depends on the receiver and speaker's performance as well as the room's architecture. Ideally, square room is the best for home theater purpose. For a 5.1 setup, front speaker including front left, right and center speaker should be kept at ear level and satellite unit should be angled towards the listener. The rear sound unit must be 1 or 2 feet above the ear level at a 90 degree angle for optimum performance. This is what I managed to achieve here. Except the center speaker, I chose to mount it in the top and it can be placed at the bottom as well. Alright, now I'll talk about all three frequencies. First up is bass, which this speaker has plenty of. Unlike the predecessor, this one has a slightly tighter bass. But if you increase the bass volume above 60%, it will sound muddy and will drown out all other frequencies. You will have trouble hearing the dialogues, especially if you put the subwoofer in a corner. I recommend keeping it somewhere in the middle, although it will completely depend on your room. For a bass heavy movie such as John Wick 3, Pacific Rim or Saving Private Ryan, you can feel every gunshot explosion even at a lower bass volume. Now it's not gonna hit you in the chest like a powered Poke Audio HTS-12 which costs twice as much but at this price point, you really need to keep your expectation in check. However, this doesn't mean the subwoofer cannot pack a punch. In movies like Fury or Godzilla King of the Monster, even if you keep the bass volume at 40%, it creates a tremendous amount of air pressure and it can shake your room's furniture. In fact, you may not be able to tolerate this much bass. And you also might get a call from your neighbor. Now low frequencies or bass tend to hover more in the corners. So some bass traps will definitely help in dampening them, which I have yet to invest. Okay, now let's talk about mid-range or vocals. It sounds average and sometimes I struggle to hear the dialogues from the center speaker. Even if I keep the center speaker volume at full because there is no option to adjust the front speaker volume. To experience the real crash link, just why the lady for whom you worked led to that necklace. Audience of pearls, diamonds, a flawless ruby, Hartley, the gems of governors. I would then choose one not writing tell us one more. Holmes, you were engaged. The ring is gone, but the lightest skin that it once had suggests that you spent some time abroad where you proudly let us until you were informed of its true and rather modest worth, at which point you broke off the engagement and returned to England for better prospects. The music sounds really good in them, especially hip hop and EDM, but they are quite bad for jazz. The reason being is the satellite speaker lacks a dedicated tweeter. Instead, it uses a compression diver to deliver the travel, and in my findings, the high frequencies have very little presence. For example, if a movie or a game has a glass breaking sound which is mostly a high frequency sound and supposed to be carried out by the tweeters but here in this case, the lack of the dedicated tweeter makes less of an impact. Now I have been using this set of speakers for over a couple of years now and I found it to be really enjoyable for horror movies where sound plays a much greater role. The speakers also performed brilliantly with gaming as well. 
a game like Witcher 3 literally puts you right in the center of an adventure. You can literally hear the amazing ambience which they really have meticulously created here like wind blowing in the trees or funny chatter of the NPCs from the surround speakers. Now in gaming, sound is not linear like movies or TV shows. Here it's completely dynamic. For example, see this NPC is chatting here and the sound is coming from the front side. Now if I walk forward, the sound will shift to the back surround speaker. For a game like Bad Company 2, which is in my opinion the best sounding game of all time. This game can give the subwoofer a nice workout. You can feel every explosion and enemy footsteps passing by. The game's sound is so accurate, you can literally pinpoint the exact enemy position. For PS5, you won't be able to use this speaker because PS5 doesn't support Dolby or DTS. Instead, it uses their own proprietary Tempest 3D audio, which currently has no support, even for the latest AV receivers. All the current PS5 games uses a PCM 7 channel audio. The sound from the speakers really fills out the room and here in my room, sometimes it's hard to pinpoint the bass. Maybe because I have an acoustically treated room. It certainly gets better if you keep the speaker volume at 60% with subwoofer volume at 30% unless your neighbor files a complaint. Now I had the opportunity to test couple of Dolby Atmos soundbars where the sound was supposed to reflect from the side walls and the ceilings. But there were two major issues. The right wall had a bookshelf and the ceiling was a textured false ceiling. So the effectiveness of surround sound was completely diminished. My guess is the soundbar can only work if the room is perfect for sound reflection. Kinda like an empty room. But even if you put it in an empty room, it will still sound echoey. Also, there is no front channel separation. So I truly don't understand the reason behind buying an expensive single unit soundbar. Now some of them do come with a side surround and those can work somewhat. But still you won't get the proper sound separation. Cause technically, front left and right speaker has to be a minimum distance of 6 feet in between. Also, as per Dolby's recommendation, the speaker's position has to be at ear level. The speaker priced around 20k. With that price, I am giving the Logitech Z906 a 7 out of 10. I truly believe that playing a sound demo and reading the specification doesn't help the consumer at all. But here in India, well, you can see it for yourself. Anyways, that's all for the review. Feel free to leave a comment here or on Reddit. Upcoming videos will be on my desk setup and also my theater room tour. I only create these videos just to share knowledge and awareness. And hey, thanks for watching and have a good one.